backing accidents are the second most frequent type of vehicle accident in the Department of Highways. They usually involve backing into a fixed object or another vehicle. That building or post or guardrail or whatever can't get out of the way. Surprisingly, very few with backing accidents with department equipment have a towed unit involved. Apparently, we're more careful when we're towing. Backing accidents range from backing into other vehicles to starting vehicles and gear. Backing accidents even happen when nobody's in the truck that rolled back because the brake wasn't set. Backing into door headers with loader buckets and dump boxes raised happens fairly often also. But let's face it, all backing accidents are preventable. In this video, we're going to cover some precautions that can prevent most of these accidents. We'll also cover some ways to reduce common problems with backing. The most obvious solution would be to never back up. Anytime you back up, your field of vision is significantly reduced. Blind spots and distorted depth perception in mirrors complicate all backing maneuvers. The important factor is to know what obstructions are in the space you're going to back into. You can't always know that from the cab. You've got to get out and look around the unit. Even if you have a spotter, you are the person in control of steering and the person responsible for completing a safe backing maneuver. Check for obstructions and clearance in your path. Let's start by reviewing the sight problem characteristics of backing maneuvers. There are blind spots on each side and the rear of all vehicles. Mirror adjustments can reduce them, but remember, you've always got those blind spots. At the back of our single axle dump trucks, the vision area in the mirrors is three feet wide on the left side and two feet wide on the right side. You have to get 17 feet behind the truck on the left side and 20 feet on the right side to get a vision area in the mirrors six feet wide. These shaded areas show the vision area behind the truck. The unshaded areas to the side and rear of the truck are the blind spots. As you back this vehicle, these blind spots progressively cover different portions of the area you're backing into. If you were backing and turning at three miles an hour, an object near the rear of the vehicle would appear in the mirror for less than a second. You could miss it if you hadn't walked the area to spot obstacles. Most of the driving you do is driving forward. Less than 1% of your driving is in reverse, but that's when many of the accidents occur. The important thing to remember is don't get rushed. If things aren't going right, just try again. 90% of backing is the initial setup. Think about how you'll have to back when you come into a situation that will involve backing. You might want to come at it from another direction. When you're set up, get out and check. You may have to check two or three times. If you are backing out of a garage, the blind spots precede your vehicle through the door. There can be all sorts of hazards lurking in the blind spots, just waiting for you to hit them. A vehicle parked outside the garage door would be in the blind spot until the driver's side window clears the door. If you began turning without checking your left side mirror, you would back into the parked truck. It's a natural tendency to watch for your right front fender to clear the door jam. When you're backing, you have to check mirrors frequently. Objects are only visible for an instant. That's another reason to walk your backing area so you know what to look for. We'll show some common backing maneuvers from the ground level and the driver's perspective. Then we'll go over some techniques that will help you improve your backing. First, let's look at a truck backing out of a garage door and turning.
Simple, right? You do it every day. Well, let's look at what the driver sees during the same maneuver. You might catch a brief glimpse of the other trucks in a conventional truck mirror. If you didn't know they were there, you could have missed seeing it. A spot mirror gives a much wider field of vision, but the depth perception is very distorted in these mirrors. Another thing to be careful of is door clearance on plows and other attached equipment. This is a blindside back. If possible, avoid backing in this direction. Visibility is very limited. The right side mirror shows a restricted view and the left side mirror only shows you things you've already cleared. Plan your approach and departure to avoid backs to this side. A safer maneuver would be to back straight out and turn going forward. You'll need more space, but it eliminates the turning maneuver while backing. Check the area in your backing path for obstructions, then back straight out. By eliminating the turning maneuver, you can concentrate on the single straight backing maneuver. Anytime you can reduce the number of operations you're doing, you increase your efficiency on the remaining task. By negotiating the turn while going forward, you also get much better visibility for the maneuver. Sometimes using a spotter to direct your backing helps you complete the maneuver with more confidence. The spotter should be in a position that gives a clear view of the area and where you can see him clearly. The two of you also need to be sure of the signals that will be used. The spotter is easier to see in front of the driver. By positioning out to the side in the direction of the turn, the spotter has a better view of the backing area. But the spotter usually stands behind the vehicle. The spotter has the best view possible of the backing area from behind the vehicle, but the driver can only see the spotter in the mirror. It may be difficult for the spotter to stay in a position to be visible in the driver's mirror. Even with a spotter, you may still need to get out and look it over before you start. Backing trailers and other towed units is harder than backing a straight truck, but department records show very few accidents involving towed units. The rear axle of the truck is the steering axle for the trailer. To steer the trailer, you have to turn the steering wheel of the truck in the opposite direction. Some people find it helpful to steer holding the bottom of the wheel. To back a trailer, you have to jack it to get it headed in the direction you want it to go. Then you chase it through the back, steering opposite to the direction you want the trailer to go. The field of vision in your mirrors is very limited, but they're your only view of what's behind you. Chasing the trailer in the mirrors, you use small steering inputs. When the trailer drifts, steer slightly in the opposite direction to correct. If the trailer drifts out of your field of vision, it's likely to jackknife and you may have to pull forward to realign. Small steering inputs using the mirrors make backing a trailer easier. The length from the hitch to the trailer axle greatly affects the steering of the trailer. On longer units, things happen much slower. On short units, like a tar pot, you have to anticipate and steer before you see your cue in the mirror. 
Backing on stockpiles and ramps can be tricky because of the possibility of backing off the edge. Building a berm on the edge can help by providing a warning you would feel when you get near the edge. Back straight, use your mirrors, and take the time to get out and walk the area you'll be backing into. If you have trouble backing, get out some traffic cones and set up a practice area in the yard. A basic serpentine will give you plenty of practice backing to both sides. You'll have lots of room and you won't hurt the cones running over them. As you get better, shorten the distance between the cones. In summary, let's review. Get out, check the backing area for hazards and obstructions. Don't rush, take your time. Plan your approach, set up for the back. Remember the blind spots. Use your mirrors, check them often. Use a spotter to guide you on tough backs. On long backs or when you aren't sure, get out frequently and check even with a spotter. If it's not going well, start over, set up again. Remember, most backing accidents are caused by getting in a hurry. Most of them are preventable. Take the time to avoid backing accidents.